Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Lucy. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm really interested and intrigued about your story. And also, I know your business is quite young. Um, so that that's always of interest to me as well. I've had a few people on where they had young businesses, and it's really fascinating um, I, and exciting because one of the things is this podcast is for people that are start want to start their business so they can listen to other people who have started and hearing young business stories is you know gives people a really good insight so yeah. i appreciate you coming on and <laughs> i am honored because you've said that this is your very first podcast interview it uh, is and i'm honored you picked share your story <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you I'm um I'm yeah I'm a bit nervous but I'm uh well yeah <laughs> <laughs> you'll be absolutely fine um right I'll start with a really big open question and that is uh tell us your story and how you got to where you are today Lucy okay um oh where to start that's the that's the main question isn't it I mean um okay so I suppose probably the best thing to do is to probably go back about 10 years ago. Um, I was working in and had been working in um, business to business uh, sales, HR and admin. And I'd done it for, well, since I was however old you are when you start work these days, 17, I suppose. I'm 33 yes. now. So um 16 17 I think I started when I was my first proper job and um yeah I I had my fill of being in the nine to five office job basically I was getting a bit a bit sort of sick of being in the office and just right. needed a bit of a change and um I uh came out of uh came out of sort of uh corporate life and had um I actually took a year out I I literally just kind of my uh, partner at the time and my mom and everything helped me I wasn't doing very well with my mental health and I just needed a bit of a, a mental health break and just yes. took sort of nine nine months out and um after that I decided that I wanted to have a complete and utter career change um and went back to college and trained as a dental nurse right. um and I was doing that up until 2020 Right. 2020 being the wonderful year that it was yes. <laughs> when everything changed. Um, I was doing dental nursing, loving it, um, but I was heavily pregnant um, in March of 2020. I was due to give birth in April of 2020. Wow. And we went into lockdown on the 27th of March <laughs> and my son was born on the 10th of April. So um, I had my little boy um, very much at the start of the first lockdown. Gosh. Um, and that in itself was a complete and utter experience. Um, mm. One that was amazing, but also parts of it that I don't, wouldn't want to repeat again. And and there will be other women out there that, you know, will have a similar story of, yeah. of you know, um, I, I was in, I was actually induced and I was in hospital for a week. My partner wasn't allowed to come in. He wasn't allowed to come and see us. Um, mm. I wasn't allowed to leave the room. Um, I made the huge mistake once of sneezing and then got put into isolation. <laughs> so no one was allowed to come and see me. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I had, um, literally they came and like put like police tape strips on my door. Um, it was bizarre um yeah. but quite good because it meant that I got the maternity room on my own for the week so <laughs> no one brilliant. else was allowed in there so I had like my own private hospital room which was great but I didn't have COVID but because I'd made the dramatic mistake of sneezing in front of someone um that yeah that was um weird well, you can't really help <laughs> sneezing is not something you can hold in I know is it? I know um <laughs> So, yeah, I was in for like a week um, and then my partner was only allowed to come up on uh, when I was sort of in active labour, which I was lucky because there are some women out there that I think weren't allowed their hospitals, put a complete ban on it. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, it was um, odd, to say the least. Not something that I'd like to go through again. But um, I obviously came on my maternity leave and, and um, I, you know, was all the way through my maternity leave was quite miserable because I it wasn't the maternity leave that I really sort of had planned um no. you know with everything being closed I couldn't go anywhere yeah. with him we were inside and not not brilliant um and it was coming up to the end of my maternity leave and obviously like most women I was kind of questioning what am I going to do you know should I go back to work yeah and then I started thinking I really don't want to go back into nursing with this still going on you know all the way through my maternity leave I've been thinking it'll it'll blow over by the time my maternity yeah. leave finishes it'll be fine I can go back to work and no problem and obviously it didn't so um I to- sort of took the huge kind of decision to stop dental nursing I, I came off right. the GDC register and um yeah I I just didn't feel comfortable going back into medical surroundings and then having to come home to a a newborn baby and my partner is a butcher so he's been working all the way through the pandemic anyway um so I I just didn't want to kind of double up on the risk of of bringing something into the house yes um and just just a quick question Lucy yeah how long did you have to study for to become a dental nurse (laughs) I want to say two years, but I think that might be a lie. I think it was like eighteen months. I think so. Oh, okay, not long. Not like oh. it's not. It's not like um. It's not like a full kind of nursing sort of degree. No. Um, right. Because it's obviously not like the whole body. Um, it's obviously just the the one area. Yes. Um, and it is done. I it, mine was done on a on an apprenticeship. I went back as an adult apprentice. Um, okay. And um, I worked and I, I, I literally started on my apprenticeship course and, and got a job with a dental practice um, this, the same week that I started right. on the course. And then you basically work whilst you're doing your course. Yes. Um, I think it, I think it's 18 months all told with, oh, okay. you know, as long as you yeah. pass your exams and everything, obviously, and then you're talking about resets and things like that. But I think it's 18 months on average. So And... Uh, and- <clears throat> The what you were doing previously, you were saying you were in sales, HR, and other things. That is a massive switch from yeah. doing that, I guess, admin type role. Although sales is not admin, but there's a lot of admin involved. Yes. Uh, and then going into dental nursing. Why did you make that switch? I'm really intrigued. Do you know. know, honestly, I would love to know myself. I, <laughs> I. I'd love to have some sort of simplified answer for you. Um, Doesn't matter. I don't. I don't really have an answer. It was literally. I, I like I said. I just. I. I. I wasn't doing very well with coming home after work every day, being stressed out from you know being in uh, the 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 whole thing of like being in an office. If you've never worked in an office, it's just it. Uh, it's either brilliant and it's fun or it's completely the opposite and it's 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 mind numbing it's soul destroying and it it can yes. really really damage your health like you know men- mentally it's it's not great um the office politics in some places are just horrific yes um and i'd been like i said i've been doing it since i was 16 17 and I just I I couldn't physically do it anymore it was draining me um and my mum I think that was probably where the idea of the dental nursing came around was that my mum was actually a fully qualified dental nurse Ah, uh not not dental nurse fully qualified nurse sorry right right nurse she was a a proper nurse um And um, I'm going to get shouted at by dental nurses now. She's not a proper nurse. She's a proper nurse. <laughs> We're nurses. We've got the title nurse. No, um, my mum was an A&E nurse. There you go. Yes. Um, and she'd been in medical all her life. And um, I think I wanted to go into nursing, but I didn't have the kind of capacity in me to kind of take another after the time off that I'd had already, I didn't yes. I didn't have enough capacity to kind of take off another three years or so to go to university full time to go and do a nursing course and yeah. 
you know do all of that sort of side of it um and you know I'd got a flat and a house and stuff to pay for and it just it wasn't financially viable for me to go back to university got you that was when I saw the apprenticeship um which was for dental nursing um and I kind of thought actually that could be something you know that's kind of a bit of a middle ground I'm doing the complete switching career that I wanted but I'm going into the medical field again which is another side of what I wanted to kind of follow in my mum's footsteps a little bit I suppose um yes and yeah I think that was really kind of where it came from but other than that there was no reason for it it just sort of (laughs) it was just one of those things I saw the apprenticeship and thought yeah I'll give that a go (laughs) I mean sometimes it happens that way doesn't it so yeah um I mean there must have been some genetics involved with your mom being in nursing that there's like this subtle kind of hint yeah Um, I think medical has always kind of like intrigued me and obviously because I've always been around it I I'm 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 not a fully qualified nurse. I'm not a doctor by any stretch of the imagination and I, I don't proclaim to be, but I do have a little bit of medical knowledge because of what my mum did. And I think yes. that was kind of because I had that little bit of knowledge. I, I thought, you know, well, I'll expand on that existing knowledge that I've already got. Yeah. And that was kind of where the medical sort of side came in and, and that was kind of what I wanted to do. Um but yeah, like I say, then 2020 hit and that completely changed everything again and obviously with my little boy he's just completely and utterly turned everything on its head um it's yeah you know it stopped being about me when he was born and and he became my priority and yes um I just I didn't feel comfortable with everything going on in the world that I I didn't want to go back into the medical field which is it it's a shame but I had friends that were sending me pictures um, of like in the very, very early days yes. with the the proper sort of the, I call them the hazmat suits, the way that I describe it, but they were, yes. you know, fully sort of PPE'd up and they were coming home and they got bruises on their noses, they've mm. got bruises under their eyes and I just thought, I don't want that, you know, I don't want that no. sort of like additional, you know, you don't go to work to get marked you know it's not and then having the additional risk of potentially bringing in this like really deadly you know virus into the house into my newborn's house um and we were living with my mom at the time as well we'd moved in to when we heard about covid and obviously with me being pregnant um I I didn't want my mom to miss out on being a a grandparent and whatnot so we we'd come back and we were all living with my mom Yes. So that she could like we could all what did they call it? Bubble. We we're all in a bubble together. That's yes, it. That's I'm getting it. all the I'm getting all the COVID keywords back now. All the, um, all the terminology, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so we had our own little bubble. Um and then uh yeah, it was um we were we were sort of um wait so sorry, my phone just rang and it's just completely thrown me off what I was talking no, no, about. No, no, so no, sorry. Right. You moved in with your mum, yeah. So you're in your own bubble kind of bonding with with your little one I guess yeah that's yeah. it and um yeah I, I was coming off my maternity leave and I got lucky really that um I a friend uh, of mine well I say friend he was a, an acquaintance that I used to know in the dental business they contacted me saying that they were looking for some um help with their operation support and did I have any experience in you know sort of operations and HR and things like that and and was it something I could help with and I said yeah I can you know this is that's completely fine I've I've you know prior to dental nursing that's what I actually did I you know this is that was kind of my wheelhouse um yes yes. and I said I I can't come down to London though I've got a newborn baby you know that's if that was where they were based at the time they said no no no, it's all virtual I thought okay how's that going to work you know how am I going to work for someone virtually doing all of this sort of stuff and um and yeah I was with them for like a year doing all of their operation support for their dental practices basically down in London um and it was 
great it you know it, it's subsidized having you know no money coming in and and on my side of it it meant I didn't have to keep going cap in hand to my my partner all the time for money and yes. um but it was them that actually gave me the idea because I started thinking well if I can do it for you I can do it for other people yes um but I also then started researching into virtual assistants um and realized I was getting massively underpaid by this particular company <laughs> um this particular company were paying me what they should be paying an employed member of staff not a self-employed yes. member of staff um so once I found that out it, it kind of put a bit of a dampener on it a little bit I did try and go back and talk to them about it and say look you know can can we come to some sort of arrangement you know this is I've been with you a year now and you know I think I obviously I'm self-employed I don't get paid tax you know I have to pay my own taxes I have to pay everything out and my accountant had said I would basically might as well take five pound an hour off what I was earning per hour to cover everything that I had to pay out and essentially that was putting me under the threshold for minimum wage by that time yes um and I just thought it's just not worth it so I um ended up getting in contact with a mentor she's a business coach um a virtual assistant business coach um and signed up to one of her courses that I'd seen on LinkedIn Right. Um, I was very, very new on LinkedIn at the time and literally just kind of came across her by accident and wasn't really sort of aware of who she was or what was, yes. you know, anything to do with virtual assistants. And um, I thought I'm going to have to sort of bite the bullet here. I, you know, I, if I'm going to make this work, I'm going to have to kind of take a bit of a take a bit of a chance with it. And I signed up to her course and paid out, you know, quite a substantial to me anyway, a substantial amount of money. Um but it turned out to be like probably one of the best things I did because it yes. was um, the course itself was brilliant, but it was also, it gave me the confidence to get rid of the client that I already had. And within a, within two days, I'd signed another client for like triple the amount of money that I was getting with the one client that I just let go. And since then, everything's kind of snowballed a little bit. I've, you know, I think people don't realize actually what virtual assistants do and um, all of the legal things that we have to do to kind of be registered, you know, to be a sort of an official virtual assistant, I suppose, yes. or a, a legit virtual assistant. I think a lot of people, I see things on Facebook and stuff, you know, like, oh, do you want to make a thousand pounds a week? And, stuff like that you know with no training you don't need to have done anything and it's like I feel like shouting at them actually you do there's so much that you need to do to be a virtual assistant it's so expensive yes yes <laughs> the stuff that I have to pay out and all of the courses that I've done and the memberships and the subscriptions and insurance and mm. yeah you know, people just don't realize that, that no. there is all of that but to be a legit business owner you have to have that in place and you know I'd rather have that in place and cover myself but also cover my clients and make them feel a bit more secure about coming to me as yes. an assistant yeah. um so yeah that's kind of where we are now it's kind of yeah it's really taken off to be honest it's getting well it's getting getting there anyway <laughs> no it sounds amazing and what what is great that you know you managed to attract a course that then gave you the confidence to be able to then go it alone rather than the thing is we always want security don't we in terms yeah. of income and when we don't have that we we go into fear and then we'll take anything that we can get basically and, and that's okay for a small period of time needs must of, of course but the fact that you've you know, got the confidence to go it alone and you got that extra client and yeah, it's really, really brilliant, Lucy. It's, it's, it's a wonderful transition from where you were yeah. and, uh, you know, congratulations and well done. Thank you. Into, you mentioned um, with the being a virtual assistant, so uh, you mentioned a few things that I wasn't aware of and I wouldn't yeah. mind just unpicking that a tiny bit. Yeah, of course. Um, so virtual assistants have to be registered? They don't have to be, but it's no. better. 
Um, so you don't have to be um, registered as such with a, mem a, a, a sort of a, a virtual assistant company or anything like that. You obviously, I'm I'm self employed. I yes. I work for myself. That's my business. My my business is is how virtual. But to be a legit virtual assistant, um, because we are working with clients and we have our own um records that we keep and and things like that it's we have to be registered with the ico with the um uh, G, for gdpr purposes basically so we have to subscribe to the ico per year um as ico as this is the information, the information commissioner's, commissioner's office. office yeah to be able to be um you know with beholding data and processing right. data because obviously we're we're handling potentially, I mean, even not confidential sometimes, it doesn't need to be confidential information. You know, it can be things like email lists. It can be, it can be something completely general like that. It can just be, you know, a letter or something like that, but or emails, but it can be completely personal business information, you know, that could, uh, you know, I work with a company, it's a, it's a, a huge company. I, I can't because I've, signed an NDA with them I can't give the name yes. of it but it's a no, massive no. company um but like one of those you know if any of their data leaked I I potentially would be in a lot of trouble if anyone yes. got hold of any of that data right um so yeah it's you know we have to register with the ICO um every time I do any client work or very occasionally i don't i don't do it too much but um for this very reason but very occasionally i might go and work in a cafe or something just cuz you know you can get a bit stir crazy working from home all of the time yes um and i always when i use my when i do any client work i pay a subscription to have a virtual private network so a vpn on my computer so that it makes it more difficult to hack my computer yes yes um it was recommended because especially for people that are going into like coffee shops where they have uh i don't know if you go into starbucks for example yes. or tesco's you can get on an open network there which means that yeah anyone can find your computer and hack it on that network yeah. uh because they know you're in the coffee shop so um that was one thing I didn't know when I signed up to being a vet you know when I started being a virtual assistant you know you think yes. oh you just need a, a laptop and a microphone and that's it I'm good you know <laughs> um but yeah so you have to have your ICO reg you I did GDPR courses I've got the VPN on my computer um I have to pay well, I don't have to pay but obviously it makes it better for me but I pay you know subscription for my Apple computer to have additional software protection on it and you know um yeah so it's quite expensive when you kind of tot it up at the end of the month of what you've paid yes. out for you know and that's just for that <laughs> that's just for that little yeah section. I mean these are these are really really good points and I think it helps in terms of credibility for a virtual assistant. I hadn't even occurred to me when you mentioned it to begin with that, you know, obviously data protection is, is really, really important. Huge. Yeah. And it's, it's a favorite, well, they call it hobby horse. That's even the wrong term, but yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a gripe of mine. You know, how many people grab your email and add you to a list without permission and all of that yeah and um so it's really important to have that as confidential yeah exactly uh, yeah very good very good so exactly how long have you been doing this now juggling your young one your newborn <laughs> and 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 your work how long have you been doing it so um i actually uh, i'm trying to think now uh my days have literally just blurred into i can imagine I one can long imagine. one long day um <laughs> yeah i think aside from doing the the maybe i think 10 months that i did with the original company that kind of yes. gave me the idea um <laughs> yeah. which i don't count because i wasn't really whilst i was self-employed with them i hadn't i hadn't got any other clients i hadn't sort of set up on my own officially so i yes. don't really count that i count it as experience but not part of my business kind of section right. um 
but I would say we're coming up to well, my little boy is two and a half. Yes. So I'd say maybe just coming up to two years now, I think. Brilliant. Yeah, on that's my, nice. On my that's... own. Yeah. Okay. Well um, done. And yeah, we've, it's, it's been a rocky road getting here, to be honest, with the, we had the, we had the pandemic uh, in, like say, with my little boy being born in 2020. And then, uh, so I had a, a, a weird year in 2020. Um, and then 2021, um, completely and utterly, again, just put a dampener on everything. My mum caught COVID and didn't come right. through it, unfortunately. Um, so my mum passed away. We were all in the house. We all caught it. Um, we all caught it at the same time. Um, me and my partner were, you know, I mean, we were really, really poorly with it. Um, I probably was the least poorly out of all of us, but right. I still, I still felt really bad with it. Um, and, um, I, I obviously was getting up and doing all the childcare and everything. Cause we, no one would come in and help us cause they weren't interested coming in and helping with, with a COVID house. So, sure. um, which is completely understandable. Um, but yeah, we, we had it for like two weeks, but after two weeks, my partner and me were starting to get a little bit better. Um, yeah. and my mum wasn't, she was getting worse and eventually mm. after sort of, I think it was 17 days, I sort of said, look, you know, this is getting silly now. You need to, we need to call someone and see if, what's going on here. Yeah. Um, and we, we called the ambulance and they came out, um, they did some tests on her and her oxygen level was 40%. Um, and wow. apparently anything under 94 is like dangerous. So 40% was awful. Mm. Took her to hospital and less than 36 hours later, she, she'd she gone. So oh. that was, she was completely healthy. Um, mm. I say completely healthy. As far as I'm aware, she wasn't diagnosed with anything. Um, and yeah, that, that was last year, uh, June last year. So um but I, I think if I didn't have my little boy and yeah. didn't have my business as well, I think has kept me going, actually. I think yes. my partner has obviously been amazing as well. Obviously, that's that's a given. But yeah. um, I never stopped working on my business, even which makes me sound really, really heartless. But it was my way of kind of coping with everything. Um, 100%. Yeah. You know, I think if I'd if I'd sort of stopped and let myself kind of wallow in it too much I think it would have just taken me down a really dark road and obviously I had my little boy to look after and I didn't want to do yes. that and I know my mum would have been really angry at me if I'd have done that so <laughs> got that in my, my mum yeah. would have just been really disappointed in me um so yeah I just carried on as sort of normal really I've I've worked all the way through everything and you know tried to make a success out of my company and um, you know, done it so that, you know, my mum would be proud of me and, you know, my little boy yeah. has got something to hold on to as well. Fingers Absolutely. crossed that's what the plan is. Yeah. And I mean, effectively, you you had at the time two newborns, didn't you? Um, you had a brand new business and a brand yep. new child. Yeah. And so you had a lot of responsibilities that you needed to get on with. Yeah, exactly. And in some way it was it is a blessing because it meant you didn't you could be distracted. Yes. Oh, um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, obviously it goes without saying, but I'm sorry for your loss. And Thank you. um you know it it at least mum has was able to see your little son. Yeah, um, she had as well. She had like a year with him, I think, just under yes. a year. So, yes. um, you know, obviously, it's not, it's not exactly the the you know I didn't want him to lose his nan that early, and I know she would have absolutely no. loved to have seen him. And that's that's the most difficult thing for me is like I come home sometimes. Like we went to stupid things. Like I took him to a fire station yesterday for the first time because he's absolutely obsessed with fire trucks. Um, oh wow! And. Uh, 
Yeah, our, our local fire station were amazing with him. They were brilliant. They let him use the hose and they drove him around in the fire truck and everything. But it's oh. silly things like I wanted to come home and like the first thing I wanted to do was go, oh, mum, look at these pictures. And I have to kind of remind myself I I can't, I can't show her those pictures or, mm. you know, she's she's never going to hear him saying nanny. Like he's just started saying mummy. Um, yes. Like he used to say mama, but he's, his new thing is mummy, which is brilliant. But 9,000 times a day, it does get a bit draining on you. <laughs> mummy, mummy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like the first time I heard it, it was amazing. And now it's of like, oh, oh God, <laughs> say something else. Um, <laughs> learn a different word. Um how about but daddy? <laughs> he does say he does say daddy, but daddy's obviously at work a lot more than mommy oh, is. So yeah. <laughs> um yeah, he um his his favorite word at the moment is um but yeah, you know, he's never gonna say nanny yes, in terms of that. And it's that's that's the difficult thing for me. But um it's yeah, I think if I didn't have well, I know if I didn't have him and my partner and, and like I say, my my business as well, because that, yes. weirdly enough, has been like some people, some people take their kind of break, they have a break from work. But to yes. me, my, not work, because he's not a job. No. But my day-to-day is being a mum. So my break for me and my my kind of like getaway is doing my work. I'm like yes. backwards to everyone else. Like yeah. most people go to work and then they come home to their family, you know, and that's their that's their time away. But because I'm 99% mum, my 1% of business is like, you know, I I enjoy my job and I enjoy my business and I like working on my business. So yes. to me, that is kind of my my little getaway. It's my thing. It's my, you know, like some people will go and run themselves a bath or have a glass of wine. I sit down and I do my work. I, you yeah. know, I, I'll schedule content. I speak to people. It's where I get my grown up time from essentially by yeah, having brilliant. conversations on LinkedIn and um you know so that that's like I say I'm a bit backwards compared to everyone else but my my enjoyment is my job now and my company so um it's yeah bit bit of a weird sort of thing to say that but I yeah. don't think it's weird <laughs> at all. No. I mean the thing is if you can have enjoyment from your work you will never work a day in your life again. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Because it will just not be seen as work. It's just part of enjoyment. You know, it gives you joy to be able to do your work. And that's really, really important. So well done. Yeah. I would say that's brilliant. So tell us a little bit about the kind of things that you do for people. You know, I I, I bet you will say, well, it can be anything, but you may have some, <laughs> you may have some big headlines that you promote or discuss with people what you can do. So please yeah. share that. Yeah. So um, you are right. I do a, a little bit of everything. Um, the the one thing that I don't do generally, because I'll be completely, I'm not very good at it, um, is anything maths related. So <laughs> if you've got something maths related, I'm not your girl. Um <laughs> Don't come to me. Um, I don't do things like accountancy. I just, I, I, I'd be completely honest. I will balls it up and mess it up. And I wouldn't <laughs> want to take on that responsibility. So, um, but yeah, other than that, I, you know, there's the, there's kind of what we call general VA work. So that is um, things like email management, calendar management, um, travel planning you know just sort yes. of general kind of you know oh can you type this up for me or can you do this the general kind of running of a business you know that sort of admin work yes. um which I do but yeah. I have gone on um quite a few courses now and I've become um I, I, I used it myself a long time ago um, was Pinterest when it sort of re really when it first came out I've used Pinterest yes. for um, and I like most people didn't really understand what Pinterest was um, yes. but I you know I used it as a oh I like those curtains and I like that you know design I like those color patterns and things like that you know that was what I used Pinterest for I saw a course on it 
by accident going through some training and looking for some training courses that I could do and I thought oh, actually yeah. I, I used to like Pinterest I'll have a look at this course and I got a little bit hooked on it and I specialize now in in Pinterest for businesses right. um, and basically um, a lot of people don't realize and there's a bit of a misconception about Pinterest is that they think it's a, a sort of a social media platform like I did when I first started using it Pinterest isn't a social media platform it is a search engine it's just a visual search engine so it works yes. the same way that Google does it just uses pictures rather than text right. so your when you've got a business your your marketing to get on Google essentially that's you know everyone wants to get you know number one ranking on Google that's how you get yes. found it's the, you know that's the that's the goal <laughs> um but it takes so much to get ranked on google it's it's insane you know you have to have a, an established website you have to have so many followers and visits and site clicks and marketing yourself on pinterest and having the right pins and the right you know the right keywords on pinterest can actually help you rank on google um and that's what i do um right. so i help businesses market their products or their services it doesn't have to be a product it can be a service even if you don't have a physical product to sell um i put them on pinterest basically so i will i can um set them up I, or if they've already got an established account i'll just manage that account and help yes. them and say to them well actually i think you know we need to do this rather than that that's obviously not working for you but this could work let's try that or I can do it completely from scratch if they've never been on Pinterest before and set them up from scratch, do all their keywords, talk them through it, um, and then manage it as well if they want me to manage the marketing on Pinterest as well. So um, that's kind of what I do uh, wow. now. But I do, like I say, do still do the the general VA work as well. I also do podcast management as well, which is another thing. Um, so um, I did a course again a little bit like Pinterest it was purely because I saw so many kind of podcasts were popping up all over the place and I thought I wonder if people have got podcast managers is that even a thing you know do they do how do people how do I didn't even know how podcasts work when I look at you know I've I've listened to them but I don't really I didn't really at the time understand much about them yeah so it was really just a course to kind of get my head around it a little bit more really and just in case anyone asked me <laughs> Yes, um, yes. But I um I really enjoyed it and yeah, started looking at, you know, how how you can edit how you can edit a podcast and you know what sort of software you use and um so I got into all of that and writing show notes and things like that. So I've done all of that as well. So that's kind of yeah, those are the two main things that I do now is the Pinterest and the podcast management for for, for oh, businesses. Okay. Yeah. And do you do other social media as well? I do. Um, I don't tend to market myself as a social media manager, though. Um, right. So I will say to people, I am a podcast manager and I am a Pinterest manager. Gotcha. I don't market myself as a social media manager. But what I do say to people is I will maintain social media. So mm. a social media manager to me and to a lot of people is someone that will come up with, you know, strategies and they'll write copy and they'll do all of the you know they yeah. can do things on, and they'll do things on tiktok and instagram and there's so many i personally i'm not knocking any social media managers out there and i'm not saying because like i say i don't really know that much about it but no i think it's better to specialize in one thing and be really good at that one thing than be a master of non Right, right. Got it. Yeah. Because makes a lot of sense. If you look at TikTok, for example, nowadays, like TikTok is massive. Um and I don't understand how TikTok works. I don't understand how you can keep up with TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. I don't even know. I, I think there's like a million other platforms, but those are obviously the five main ones they change constantly of you know what you need to do to to make it on one platform and i i personally don't understand how 
one social media manager can be a social media manager of all five platforms. Yeah. I it, I could be wrong, and I'm, please don't shout at me, listeners out there that are social media <laughs> managers. <laughs> Oh whole bunch I mean, of if it's, it's a lot more sim I'm probably in my head just making it more complicated than it is. But like for me, to me, my little brain is going, I'll do Pinterest because that I only need to focus on Pinterest then. You know, I can cross yes. post to other platforms. I can, you know, I'll if I put a post out on Pinterest, obviously, if a client has got an Instagram page, I will cross post it to Instagram and just change the caption and change the sizing and all of that, you know, and I'll do that and I'll schedule it on a different day. And, um, you know, likewise, if they send me a video for Pinterest, I'll maybe upload it if they want me to, I can do things because I am a podcast manager as well. So I can take, you know, little, like, for example, out of our interview now, I yes. could transcribe your the audio that we're having and then take little captions out of that and use that to cross post to other platforms. So I can do that. Yes. But I still only market myself as a Pinterest manager because I wouldn't want to have that pressure of being a complete social media manager and then having to panic because I've suddenly got five or six platforms to market <clears throat> for someone else. I mean, that makes I, sense. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, back back in the day when social media wasn't even a thing, I marketed myself as a social media manager. You know, that's where because I started to learn Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of those things. Oh, Twitter! See, I, I mean, forgot. I forgot about Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's another Twitter, one. Twitter, Twitter, um, good old Twitter, and um. The response I got from people in the early days was like, oh, you're not well, you're not also a social media generalist, are you? And when I went to networking meetings, I was really looked down at. Yeah. And I went, no, no, this is really important. You know, this was before anybody took it seriously. And I saw the writing on the wall where it was going. And but those messages did get through to me and I went, OK. I'm just going to focus on LinkedIn and because I didn't want to become a unpaid member of staff of all the social media platforms, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of quite keen on B2B business to business. And therefore I didn't really want to do Facebook and all of those other things. Um, So you're right. I felt I had to specialize and get really, really deep on LinkedIn yeah. I did a long LinkedIn course, a video course, which is a bit old now, but it's still relevant. Um, and um, I don't do it anymore. I gave it up a few several years ago because um, all the training that I gave to people, they just didn't take any action. It was just demotivating. And I went, OK, <laughs> fine. But I never wanted to become somebody who did posting for people. I only ever wanted to train people how to use it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But I think what you've said about Pinterest is fascinating. Um, I am on Pinterest. I have a few followers. I only do a one specific thing on there. Um, but apart from that, like the podcast goes there automatically. Uh, yeah. There's a few other things that I that have been set up so that it will go there. But I've never taken it seriously. Yeah, as you said, I get a lot of views and I see people p- repinning, but I've never really got into it and kind of go, "Oh, is Pinterest really important?" So you kind of got me thinking now to say, <laughs> "Oh, do I need to look at this a bit more seriously?" And just repeat what you said at the beginning about Pinterest and Google. Yeah, so with Google. Um, obviously like the goal is to you know when you yes. type in your company the goal is to come up on google isn't it that's the that's the main goal people think that pinterest is just a social media platform and it's not um it's a social it's a visual search engine that is how i describe it to people right, so it's, right. it's it's google with pictures rather right than text. so pinterest works very very similarly to you know facebook and linkedin with with where they use hashtags 
yes. Instagram uses hashtags. That's how you get found on yes. other platforms. Pin, uh, Pinterest doesn't work with hashtags. It works with what they call keywords. Right. So when you're, when, for example, I'm listing something, um, I'm putting a pin out there. When I've got a client, so for example, you, you do podcasts. So I will go on and I will look at relevant keywords for podcasts that are right. trending on Pinterest. So that might be, you know, podcast for business or whatever it is that's trending at the time. It takes a little bit of time, but I set up a spreadsheet that of of keywords that is going to be relevant to your business to other people's businesses. Obviously, everyone is going to have their own set of keywords. Yes. And those keywords are what gets you ranked. You can you can put one pin out. You don't need to have an established website. You don't need to have um you know a million followers. I could put a pin out if it's a really good pin and it's got the right keywords and they're in the right place and that pin, that that picture pin or video pin could go viral just from having one pin on Pinterest and zero followers. And that will increase your ranking on Google. Right. So having the two working together, a lot of people just focus on Google, their SEO. You know, I've got to get SEO is such a massive word. You know, it's like, yes. I've got to get my SEO done. I've got to get a specialist. You know, I need to get someone in to do my SEO. And get on pinterest <laughs> yeah 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 get get marketing on pinterest and it will help your seo which in turn will help you rank on google brilliant yeah brilliant i love it so wow that's a, a real golden nugget and basically yeah. you help people with that effectively you're doing seo for them but using pinterest you're going through the back door yeah and, we're using yeah. pretty pictures Pretty pictures yeah. rather than codes and text and, you know, yeah. But I suppose um, you can put text on the pictures as well. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. It's all about, with Pinterest, it's about having a very, very, you see, with, with Pinterest, like I say, it's going back to the keywords again. So having your keywords, mm. what you want on a pin, you don't want just a picture. So a pin right. is, is obviously when you're on Pinterest, if you can kind of visualize Pinterest in your head, I'm sure everyone's seen yes. Pinterest. Yes. You've got your boards, haven't you? You've got your, yeah. you've got your individual pins. What you don't want to see is just a picture. You no. want you want some writing on that picture. Um, yeah. And that writing is the keywords. You want those keywords to match up with what is in your description. Right. Um, right. And... The description on Pinterest as well, you don't want to just do like you do with hashtags. So you don't want to just put, you know, hashtag podcast manager, hashtag post, um, podcast. You don't want to just write down podcast manager, podcast, you know, in a list. No. It needs to be in a written format. So Right, right. In please, copy. Yeah, exactly. You know, click this pin to find out the top 10 podcasts that I'm listening to from the most you know from the best podcast manager out there or something along those lines you know you want to yes, write it yeah. in yeah I've just made that up off the top of my head you know that was, that was terrible um <laughs> I don't <laughs> no. write that but you know you get the idea you know you want yes. it to be in prose rather than in just list version um Got it. and you want those keywords that podcast podcast manager you want that to be in your picture as well in your pin because yes. the more places that you've got your keywords, the more likely it is to rank and it is to come up on Pinterest. And obviously, the higher up you rank on Pinterest, the more clicks you're going to get, the better the SEO, mm. the more likely you are to rank higher on Google. Do you know any stats like how many active users there are on Pinterest? Oh, yes. Off the top of my head, that's the other question, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, roughly, rough, rough, rough. So... In a day, um, I think the last time I checked it was um, most of them are women. Um, so I think about 80, I think it was 84% were women. Yes. And the last time I looked. Um, and they were between 18 and 30. Gosh. That was just the, the highest amount. Yes, the most, yes. but most of the people on Pinterest are on there to buy. They're on there. The the last time Pinterest did a census on their on their users, 
um pin people aren't going on there to browse basically they are going on there to buy something or to purchase yeah. a service or mm. find something specific yeah the last time i looked it was 480 something million yes. active users on pinterest that's very that's very high yeah that's very it was, high yeah it was 484 active million users Mm. there was a day count but i can't remember what the day count is i think no it no no i mean it's off just the top a... of my head i have got a list but um yeah. so it's nearly half a million active users yeah sorry half a say 500 million so yeah. half a billion half a yeah. billion active users i should say yeah um which is much much bigger than i thought yeah and again it's when i say that the majority predominantly are women which they are um, that doesn't discount men on Pinterest because no. if you've got a product and it's directed at women, that's great. Your your target audience is women, then you know, brilliant. You need to get on Pinterest. But if you've got, you don't want to discount the men either because men no, have no, no. women to buy for. So well, you mean, know, you need it. to market at the men as well because you know things like Mother's Day and you know you can you can market you know buy a present for Mother's Day you know to men you know just as an example it doesn't need to be just a project for women that needs to get on Pinterest no. plus there's so many it's service things out there now as well I mean I'm on Pinterest I haven't got a product I sell a service yes. so um you know most of the people that I know are service based um mm. and they they advertise on pinterest um they may have a virtual product or an etsy shop for example where they're yes. selling e products um you know so things like that can be on pinterest the only time i don't recommend pinterest to clients but i've it again i've never had anyone it's just as a little side note is that if yes. you're selling cbd products not allowed to sell them <laughs> right so um pinterest will ban it um you can't sell products that have got like a cbd content in it so you know whether that be like a, a cbd vape for example or obviously you could go way into that topic but yeah any any drug paraphernalia or anything like no. that they, they, they don't allow um no. and the other people that we don't recommend to is um who else is there no, it's mainly just that actually. Yeah. Everyone else is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, after all, women do make most of the buying decisions in the world. Yeah. You know. And therefore it makes complete sense that they are the majority of the audience on there. Yeah. Because they do make the buying decis decisions wherever, you know, whatever market you're in. Um and yeah, the fact that you're marketing predominantly to women is a good thing, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Thank you for that, you know, insight into Pinterest. And that's amazing. Really. Yeah, amazing. I think it's I think it's got a bit of a, a misconception about it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, like I say, you know, it is it is a social network in terms of, you know, it's a social place and it's a network it's on the internet so of course it's a yeah. social network but it's not just a social media platform it is a I, visual yeah. search engine whereas instagram and things like that aren't so that's where the difference is with pinterest gotcha. um and i think a lot of businesses don't realize that and they don't no. they don't realize how powerful it is actually and once you get on pinterest i think i think every business should be on there to be honest, I think every business should have a Pinterest account um, and and get advertising on there. And yeah. they're constantly changing things on there as well. You know, like they you can they've got now like a virtual kind of shop that you can go into. So um, when your when your account is on there, if you do have a, a, a physical product that you're selling, for example, I don't know, shoes, um, yes. you can link up your site with pinterest you can link up everything on there so if for example you are changing prices you've got an offer on um your every time you update your i don't know shopify account 
it will automatically update Pinterest and show that 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 that, that their offer is on. Wow. So you don't need to manually go in and keep changing all your pins every time you've got a shop offer or anything like mm-hmm. that. It will automatically put your prices on. It will automatically update the prices. It, you know, it's 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 all linked in now with with Pinterest yeah. and that's one of the things that they've done they've got like a creators platform for you know visual creators so if you've got a really creative product and it's you know you can get on the creators program which is amazing um they've got they've just released an app as well but it's only for specific um people um you have to be invited to it as well i don't really know a huge amount about it but that's kind of gone mental on tiktok this app it's a bit like um i don't really know how to describe it because i don't really know a lot about it i've just seen it right, um right. It's, it is very very new and like i say you have to be invited for it um but it's basically like a picture design platform that they've come yes. up with i think um but it's it's blown up on tiktok which obviously is going to help yeah, blow it yeah. up on Pinterest. So yeah, yeah, you know, it's Pinterest is 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 huge, and I think you know that would be my main sort of takeaway for businesses is if you're not on Pinterest, get on Pinterest, get on it, and yeah. Contact Lucy, who will manage and exactly, it for you. yeah, get in touch with me. <laughs> more to the point, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't get on Pinterest. Contact no. Lucy to yeah. get you on. Don't Pinterest. do it yourself. Come to me. I will sort it for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it's really fascinating because I've ne- I don't think I've heard anybody speak as passionately about Pinterest as you have. <laughs> um, in fact, I never see anybody speak about it. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I think do- that's one of the things is that you don't really see that many people no. talking about it, which is a shame, really. Actually, because it yeah, is yeah, you've got amazing. a bit of a niche there. Yeah, yeah, you have got a bit of a niche. What brilliant, brilliant. So. Tell us, how can people get in touch with you so they can get their Pinterest sorted? <laughs> yeah, so um, I have a website. Um, my my website is just very, very general. Um, I am going to get it redone at some point, but it's just with work, business and toddlers and whatever. My of website course. is uh, not my... Um, not my priority at the moment so yeah it's a very general not. website uh, yeah. but it's it's www.howl which is h-o-w-e-l-l virtual all one word dot co dot uk um right. and my little tagline is how can i help you <laughs> ah, <laughs> which, very which people good. seem to love they seem to love that i've managed to like tie my last name in with a how you can help you and play on yeah words with that. brilliant so, um yeah, so it's howlvirtual.co.uk. Um, my LinkedIn and my Instagram and my Facebook handle is exactly the same. It's Howl Virtual, so it's at Howl Virtual. Brilliant. Fantastic. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you would have wanted to share? Um, no, I think I would just say my my little sort of thing for anyone starting a business really is is the advice that I was given really um from my course I would like to give a little bit of a shout out actually to to if I'm if I'm allowed to do that of course um yeah my 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 original sort of business mentor my my business coach her name is Dion Slater um she is amazing um she's on LinkedIn um and she herself she was a virtual assistant and then she went on to become a mentor and a business coach in virtual assisting and she was the one that helped, sort of helped me get off the ground um but she's now gone into doing sort of mindset stuff um and positivity and um all of that sort of stuff and getting yourself out of the the headspace of feeling negative about yourself and having sort of imposter syndrome which is like huge for a lot of people yes. um so if you're kind of looking for any of that kind of help I would suggest going and speaking to her but um a bit of advice that I would give to anyone that's thinking of starting a business or you know getting out there and doing it is is to do it just do it I when I when I first started and like I said, I had this one client and realized they weren't paying me very much. And I part of me was still going, they're still paying you, Lou. You know, it's still money coming in at the end of the day. It might not be as much as you wanted, but it's still money and you can't afford to turn that down. What are you doing? And you know, yes, yes. Um, 
all of this was going off in my head and eventually I think I took the bullet and I, I bit the bullet and I got rid of that client and I suddenly panicked about it and I was like oh my god what have you just done you've just got rid of the one client that you had you idiot yeah. why did you do that and like I say I found another client within 36 hours I had another sign paid client within 36 hours and they were for triple the amount that I was getting paid with this mm. first client and I think if I hadn't have got rid of that first client, I wouldn't have had the drive and the fear that I needed to go out and find that other client. Yes. So I think that would be my sort of takeaway is that if you are starting a business, you are going to have scary moments and you just need to do it. You just need to fight through it and go through those scary moments, you know, because if you give up at the first scary moment that you have and, or stick with whatever it is that you're wanting to leave, you know, whether it be a bad, a bad client or a bad company that you might be working for. And you, you know, you don't want to be in that company anymore. You want to go and set up your business, but you're frightened because you've got bills and mortgages and all of that. Mm. Yeah. You know, everyone has it. Everyone's going to have that scary moment. And if you don't, if you don't go past it and you don't do it, you're never going to know. And you're never going to find out whether you could have been successful at something. And, you've got to ask yourself the question do you want to stay miserable in something you hate or find something that you love that you could be really good at yeah 100 so percent. that would be my takeaway great advice Thank find you. the fear <laughs> mm, find the fear that's find the better. fear yeah, yeah there you go not feel the fear find no. it yeah, yeah find it go to it yeah put yeah. yourself in fear that's the yeah. best way yeah exactly Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lucy. It's really <laughs> wonderful to hear your story and, you know, big high five, Thank a you. double high five to you <laughs> for doing everything you've done and whatever you've gone through. And yeah, well done to, you know, to stick with it, really. Thank you. Because uh, with everything that you've been through, you could have easily given up as well. Yeah. Uh, and just gone and found a job, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really it crossed my mind, crossed my mind a number of times. To I'm just go sure, and, and it probably yeah. will in the future too. You know, it did for me many times. Yeah, many times. Yeah. Thanks for being a fantastic guest. Um, no worries. Really appreciate it. I know you don't live far away from me. You're probably the first guest who's not that far away from me. <laughs> um. So let's let's uh, meet up for a cup of coffee. You know, definitely, in, yeah, that would be great. Not too future and meet face to face. That will be lovely. Lovely. And uh, speak to you soon. Angie, thank you so much for having me. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.